a leader creates a space for someone else to step into. Role models like Carol and Frederick, who take a blank canvas and paint a vision so that people can follow. ERGs should be structured to do that. Leaders know that the greatest good they can do for others it not, is not just share their riches, but reveal to them their own. ERGs should be expected to do this. Through Carol's remarks, we heard how ERGs over decades have revealed the riches of people, empowering them to be change, and how through the Look Closer campaign, companies are stepping up to reveal the riches of people within the disabilities community. We've heard from Frederick how they as leaders are revealing the riches in the lives of people under their care so they can thrive and deliver value for the company. The rest of the afternoon, you'll hear stories and case studies from others <coughs> on how they have structured their ERGs and how they're revealing the riches of these employees and these employees are delivering value for their company. And these employees are thriving and deriving sense of meaning and satisfaction in all that they do every day. But we've also built in time for you to engage and learn from each other. I only have one ask of you. Share your riches and reveal in others here their own riches. So with that, I am pleased to invite our next Speaker, Shane Nelson, who is VP and editor of Diversity Inc. Best Practices. Diversity Inc. has been in operations for 19 years, and Shane has been there in a number of significant management roles for 15 of those 19 years. Given he oversees Diversity Inc. Best Practices and has insight into what the top and the best companies do with their ERGs, we naturally have tapped into him for him to share his accumulated wisdoms and the riches of these energies. Shane. <laughs> Pleasure to meet everyone tonight or this evening, and thank you, Carol, for that nice introduction. Uh, and thank you, Carol, for giving us an introduction into the ERGs and why they're important. So, with my presentation, I'm going to delve a little deeper and give you folks some case studies on what some top companies are doing with their ERGs, how they're utilizing them, how they're engaging them. And I hope uh, you can take away some really good understanding. Introduction uh, about as Karen gave a nice introduction there. Um, I've been with Diversity Inc. for 15 years now. I help companies understand how they can better uh, manage their DNI processes to yield uh, results. So I've got a lot of good insight, especially with DRGs. They tend to be a passion of mine, so I'm very excited to talk about them. And I hope that comes across tonight. We have our top companies for ERGs. In addition to the top 50, we do specialty lists. And one of those specialty lists are top companies for ERGs. These are companies that are managing their ERGs the best and utilizing them the best, right? Many of these companies here are NLD members. The, all of these companies, when we think about the ERG um, progression model, all of these companies are dynamic. Right? They're self-managed, they manage themselves, um, they're very adaptable, they're agile in, in changing and pivoting to whatever the business needs them to do. Right? That's very, very important, and you'll see that come through in the coming slides. So, um, I want to talk about the intersectionality of 
ERG talent. On this slide, you'll see a chart here, and it shows three indexes, the top companies for ERGs, the diversity in the top 10 and the top 50, and you can see the first two, they have done significant, um, a significant job of improving performance and engagement of employees and participation in their research groups. And there's a reason for that, right? They see a business outcome, they see a business goal for these ERGs. It's a benefit for them, and that's why they're doing it, right? So it's something that you should certainly consider. Um, when we think about the top 10 and the top 10 for ERGs, you can see that they're doing a much better job of growing participation towards the top 50. Which top 50 is doing pretty good, by the way, right? But these companies have done the most in extracting the talent out of their ERG. So when we think about the intersectionality of ERG talent, think about if you had a woman's ERG. And think about all of the intersections there. You've got ethnicities, you've got sexual orientation, right? You've got different backgrounds and experiences. All of that converging to help that company achieve business objectives. And that's a very powerful tool. And that's just the women's ERG, right? So uh, I want to give you some examples of how companies are <laughs> utilizing their ERGs, or more specifically, why did the top 10 or top companies for ERGs, why are they increasing participation? There's got to be a reason. And that reason is there's two outcomes there. It's a win-win for the employees, the participants in the ERGs, and it's a win-win for the organization. Take Toyota, for example. Toyota used their ERGs, or their BPGs, business partner groups, for a number of different, in a number of different areas. They reported a significant increase between engagement of those folks in the ERG versus the overall population, right? In fact, many companies report to us that folks inside their ERGs have a significant engagement score much higher than those outside of their ERGs, right? So that's the business um, focus for that, or the business benefit for those employees. For the company, example, AT&T, a couple years ago, they realized that they needed to change the dynamic of their workforce to be successful in 2020 and beyond. They needed new skill sets. And rather than hiring hundreds of thousands of new people, what they did was they decided to create programs to skill up their current employees to get them the skills that they needed for them and the organization to be successful. And the ERGs were a big part of that, right? A big part of training that population and skilling up that population. Think about how many millions of dollars at and has saved because of that, because they tapped it to their resource, but they tapped into that talent. Then we've got GM, who used their ERGs, specifically their black ERG, to engage with the community and sell more cars, right? And through a, a very nice campaign, they were able to yield $12.5 million in revenue uh, through sales and leases of GM vehicles. And they're still doing that to this day. So very, very beneficial for the organization. So um, some, some more, next couple of slides, we're going to go into some more detail of how companies are utilizing their ERGs and how they benefit. Let's take Comcast, for example. Uh, Comcast utilized their uh, Latino ERG, Unidos, to help them better uh, create a voice-activated remote for their cable system, right? When you think about uh, Spanish-speaking folks, um, they use them to build up that database of different languages. They use them to test the remote to make sure that it was functioning uh, correctly. Uh, very good job there. They also use the other ERGs to make sure that they have, they build up this database of different commands, diverse voices, right? And when you think about, I was just having a conversation with a group about uh, different uh, voices in the South and you know uh, 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 different dialects. Yeah. You think about this, right? They're tapping into their Black ERG, their Latino ERG. Um, their Asian ERG to get those different diverse voices so that they ensure that their voice remote can respond to people all over the country, right? Very, very powerful. Comcast also used their um, their black ERG to help them create and curate content 
uh, for the, the Cablevision network. So when you have like Black History Month, for example, and you see certain channels that really have uh, a lot of uh, movies and shows geared towards Black History Month, you, you know that that's because of that Black ERG. And they're doing it with all of the other ERGs as well, right? So very, very popular. Yeah. Uh, Johnson & Johnson, really good example. We've got two really good examples here. First is the consumer impact. They utilize their Latino ERG to promote some of their, their brands doing Hispanic Heritage, um, the, the Hispanic Heritage Parade in NYC, right? Uh, they work with Walmart stores to develop this campaign. They promoted uh, a, a few of their brands. They distributed sample products. Uh, they worked with Univision uh, to create a television spot, a commercial spot that we can advance at the parade. Um, a really very nicely coordinated strategic uh, marketing effort spearheaded by this um, by this Hispanic ERG. And you can see the numbers that they're able to use, right? Um, a more than 33% increase in the sales of those specific products that they were promoting. And they were also able to uh, yield enough revenue where they were able to donate $100,000 to the Hispanic Heritage uh, Scholarship Fund for sale, right? So again, a very powerful example of how this company utilized their ERG uh, for a business impact. Now, the best example that I think of the day would be this last example for J&J for their medical devices segment, where they use the Asian ERG to work with research and development to really um, uh, launch an awareness campaign, right, about, uh, about hemostasis, okay? When we think about this, this is a, an employee research group working on a process that is critical, a life or death process, right? That process is really the first step of the healing stage to stop the bleeding. And they were able to work with R&D to promote this so much so, so successful that J&J uh, &J, uh, really used this going forward as, as their new process because the Asian ERG were able to revolutionize it, right? Um, so, something that the marketplace is not really going to see that they don't really know about, but this, a a this Asian a ERG had a significant impact on that process. And so the, the last example I'm going to leave you with is, this is a advanced example from TIA, where what they did was they utilized the, the resources from all of their areas <coughs> to come up with the TIA incubator, right? They pull talent from each of the ERGs, from their eight ERGs. They have a leadership council. And what they use this incubator for is to solve business problems and to help clients, right? And their CEO, Roger Ferguson, their ERGs were already doing a great job and he just tasked them to do more. And they came up with this TIA incubator. And what it is, is they tap into it. If senior leadership, if they're having problems with a product, if they're having, if they need a solution, if they need an idea of how to market this product, they tap into this TIA incubator. It was so successful um, and they just started this about a couple years ago, but it was so successful that they, they had to add more resources to it because they found that exactly it just kept coming, wanting them to help with different areas, right? So when you think about this, whether you start, whether you're just beginning your ERGs or if you're in the advanced stages or even in the middle, think about combining the talent from all those ERGs to help you solve business problems that, um, that you need to solve for clients of all different backgrounds all different races and sexual orientations or abilities. And uh, the last slide here, just some little self-promotion here. Uh, Diversity Inc., we have a, a corporate subscription website based on diversity best practices. Tons of case studies under, like the ones I just went over around ERGs. Uh, tons of case studies from other different areas of diversity and inclusion management. Uh, so if you're interested, just please visit the website, uh, let us know what you think. I think you'll enjoy it. If you're interested, if I piqued your interest about these ERGs, we've got tons of information on this website around ERGs. That's it. That's what I have for you. Yes, and 
Okay, so before I leave, I'd like to pose a question uh, to, to the audience here. Something for you to think about and marinate. Uh, is your ERG having an impact on your business standards? All right, think about that uh, very clearly. If yes, how are those results being communicated to the key stakeholders? Okay? And if no, if you don't have an ERG, that's okay. How do you think an ERG can help you impact your organization? How can that positively, how can an ERG, what is ERG? people with disabilities ERG, how can that help make a positive impact on your organization? So I want you to mold these questions a little bit and kind of let it marry and think about it. Give Shane a great big round of applause.